Well, I think we can all agree that from now until the end of February is an absolutely critical period for Rangers. Two huge games upcoming for the club against Hearts and Ibrox. And then obviously that tricky away trip to Kilmarnock to take on Killy at Rugby Park on that god-awful pitch. We're going to talk a little bit about that in our video, guys, next few next couple of games. We're going to talk as well about what uh, former Rangers captain and Rain Rangers player Barry Ferguson has had to say. And we'll also got some comments from one of Billy Clown's former employers about what um, a success he is and why Rangers need to hang on to him for the long term. Well, let's obviously start with the first, the most obvious thing that is upcoming. Now, on Saturday, we take on hearts at Ibrox. And I think, you know, we can all agree that this will be a game that is perhaps a little bit trickier than the, the, the name perhaps it has been in the past. Stephen Naismith will have hearts bang up for this game. He will have them ready to go, ready to fly, ready to really attack Rangers. And they'll want, obviously, it's a modicum of revenge um, after Rangers obviously beat them 2-1 in the last meeting at Ibrox. That, uh, that controversial penalty in his eyes and obviously that uh, De Neo, um the Neo winner. So that, that that's, that's something, you know, that he's going to have them bang up. But Hearts are in decent form at the moment. You know, you look back across their last few games and how they've performed, um, you know, 2-0 at home against Motherwell, a 4-1 away win at Airdrie, a 1-0 away win at St Johnston, a 3-2 away win at Dundee, a 2-0 win over Aberdeen, a 3-2 win over Dundee, a 2-1 win over Spartans in the Cup, a 2-1 over Hearts, a 2-0 over Ross County, a 1-0 with victory at um, Hibs, a 2-0 win over St Mirren, a 2-0 away victory at Celtic Park, uh, you know, that's obviously a big one there. A 2-1 two, uh, two, defeat against Aberdeen. I think that's probably their last defeat. So they, they are on a phenomenal run of form. Uh, they currently sit third. They've won in their last four, five. They've won their last five games. So like I said, Stephen Naismith will have them bang up for this game. And that's going to be a tricky one. But Philippe Clemon, no doubt, will be preparing the team, getting them ready. And obviously, I think we'll rotate again and... It, we we'll have some interesting decisions to make as to who starts, who doesn't start uh, in that game. You know, who, who he plays. We see Tom Lawrence play or Dio play alongside John Lundstrom. I think the back four will largely stay the same, if I'm being honest. Tav, Goldson, Suter and Ridvan, obviously Butland in goal. Who starts up top? Is it Dessers? Is it, uh, is it Silva? You know, these are decisions that he will have to make over the coming days. Now, it's not just, obviously, that game that is tricky than upcoming obviously as well there is the Kilmarnock game that will be upcoming as well that game um against Kilmarnock on the Wednesday night so again another tough one upcoming for Rangers um as we take on Kilmarnock at Rugby Park but Kilmarnock as well in decent form going into this game um you know they drew they drew uh one one uh with Celtic on Saturday which obviously was a phenomenal result. We, we, we all love that result. 2-0 uh, whenever Cove in the Scottish Cup fifth round, 1-0 whenever Livy, 1-1 draw with Motherwell away. You know, but if we look at their home form, obviously, on that horrible pitch of theirs, their home form, you know, is is one to be reckoned with. They have taken points from both old firm teams, beaten both old firm teams already this season at Rugby Park. Uh, actually, you go back across their homes, 2-2 draw with Hibs after they had a player sent off. Two win up, win over Dundee, uh, two two draw with Dundee. Um, what else we got here? Two one win over St Johnston, two one win over Celtic, and a the last defeat I think at home coming against Hearts. So you know, look, it is going to be a tricky tie, and Derek McInnes will have them bang up for this game and have them flying, absolutely flying into tackles um, against us. And like I said, it is a pretty awful pitch out there, uh, that hideous, horrible plastic surface at Rugby Park, and. Um, you know, it, again, these are two games. If we can come through these two games with six points, it will make such a huge difference, I think. And, you know, I, I honestly think, you know, if, if you evaluate that lot across the city, they will be sitting there thinking, yeah, these are the two games. Don't worry, Rangers are going to drop points in these next two games. And it is for us to be ultra prepared, ultra ready and have the players ready to go. Now, obviously, there was a worry going into these two games over Todd Canwell, who has been absolutely superb since coming back. Um, after the winter break, you know, his form has been phenomenal. Now, he did go off 
and obviously get that hamstring strapped straight away on Sunday. So it's to be hoped that he will be fit and available for these upcoming two games against Kilmarnock. Um, you know, it, it is it is going to be two tricky games, two tough games. And I really do hope, you know, that that we are bang up for them, the players are up for them. And we need to avoid a little bit of complacency. I think, you know, there's always a danger, isn't there? You know, when you do, when you're chasing down a team and you get there and you get to the top of the league, a little bit of a worry that, you know, maybe it's, well, we've done it now, we've got there and we, we relax a little bit, we take our foot off the pedal. But I think with our manager, with Philippe Clement, the, the, he will not allow the players to do that. He'll have them ready to go. He'll have them prepared. He'll have them, you know, ready to fight and ready to be at their very best against Hearts on Saturday. And obviously follow that up um, against um, Kilmarnock on Wednesday night. Now, Philippe Clement um, is just a fantastic manager. He's someone that has made a huge difference to this team. He really has, for me, just made such a huge impact uh, for the club uh, in what he's done in such a short time. And it's not just what we're seeing on the pitch. It's the preparation work that has gone into it, the preparation work that he does with the, with the players off the pitch. And that's certainly something that we need to continue to do. And I think he will have the team, like I said, ready and prepared to go. Now, Barry Ferguson has also been talking a little bit about Rangers. Now, we all know how big Barry loves to have his say. Um, and it's talked about the fact that Billy Clemon needs to avoid what he called a slap in the face. What does he mean by a slap in the face? Um, this is what he had to say when he was talking on his Go Football radio show. Um, you know, he talked obviously about the fact that we've got two tough fixtures upcoming, like I've said, against Hearts and Killy. And he was cautious and he warned the Rangers players against any complacency. He said that we need to stay grounded. We need to stay um, focused on what we've what we've got. And he said that there needs to be no more slipping up. You know, the fact that we've clawed this back and got this title in our hands, you know, it, it is one game at a time. It is one week at a time, as Philly Clement always preaches. And and Barry Ferguson said on his Go Radio show, he says, you don't want to get carried away and get a slap in the face. He says, enjoy it. Enjoy it on the way back. But you need to get the blinkers on. Hearts will come and Stephen Naismith will fancy his chances coming to Ibrox. They need to keep their feet on the ground. I said last week, both Rangers and Celtic would win all their games up to the April the 7th. How wrong was I? Celtic drop a couple of points but then Rangers have a tricky place to go Kilmarnock that's going to be a tough one for Rangers but they seem like they're a different place just now the most important thing is they don't get carried away they've got there but the hard work is still to be done and Barry Ferguson's right in this he says you know the hard work is still to be done you know yes it is great that we've got to the top of the league yes it is great that we are or that we are up there that uh, that big phil has got us in a position to obviously go on and you know really have this in our own hands now but like Barry Ferguson says we've got to avoid that complacency avoid that uh, that uh, getting carried away with things. And I think one of the things that's been really impressive has been the way that Philippe Clermont has got the team to have what has been, for me, a change of mentality, a change of focus. You know, you look at that game against St. Johnson in the day. In the past, you know, look, I admit it, I was worried going into that game. I was a bit nervous going into that game. Why? Because I remember what happened in the past. I remember the defeats. I remember the draws. I remember those games where we slipped up and lost points where we shouldn't have done. You know, that, that, that is the Rangers of the past. And I think we're always kind of scarred by that. No matter what Clement has done, and Clement's done, don't get me wrong, has done a fabulous job and I think has us playing some absolutely brilliant football. And, you know, this man it has is constantly preaching this one week at a time, one game at a time, one month at a time. Stay focused. You know, shutting out the external noise, as he, as he puts it. And he is excellent at doing that. But I think as fans, we're always going to be slightly scarred by our past, scarred by what has happened to us in the past, aren't we? And worried about what the future holds for the club. Now, we've obviously got to be optimistic going to these two games that we can get the results. You know, look, it's Hart, it's Kilmarnock. As long as we have the respect for them, as long as we play with that uh, with that passion and that quality that we've played with so far in the last couple of games you know we, we are we're more than capable of getting good results at uh, against these teams upcoming against Kilmarnock and Arts now Philippe Clermont um, obviously started his managerial career in Belgium and 
Right. Now, one of the guys who em first employed him and first gave him his opportunity, Genk chairman, uh, Peter Croonan, has been talking about Philippe Clement and you know, saying to Rangers fans that, look, you really do need to make sure that you hang on to this man for as long as possible and how he regrets allowing Clement to leave. Um, you know, he says that he's, he, he was, he's really, he was really missing Genk and he does really wish that he'd hung on to him for that a little bit longer. In an interview, Croonan talked about Philippe Clement and the success he's having at Rangers. This is what he had to say. He says, the longer Rangers can keep Philippe, the better for them. He says he has proven that he can repeat success over several seasons. The only thing I regret about appointing him at Genk was that he left us after that first title. We asked him to stay, but he decided to leave. Now, I think he's right in this, you know, in what he says. You know, he is someone who has demonstrated he can win back-to-back -back titles he did with Bruges. He's demonstrated he can win a series of cups. He's demonstrated he can maintain a team at the top of the league. And that is something, you know, that, that we've got to hope that, that we can continue to do to keep hold of Clermont. He really is a top-quality manager. Now, you know, the worry obviously is around Clermont that... You know, like Pruden says, you know, he decided after he won the titles at title at Genk and then the two titles at Bruges that he wanted to move on for a new challenge. And there's always the worry that, you know, that if he comes here, has success, wins a domestic treble for us, wins a double for us, does well in Europe, the clubs in England will come sniffing and with their uh, with their massive budgets, um, you know, they, they, they've always got the power to attract play, uh, managers and players from north of the border. Um, you know, he's he, he talked a bit more about Kroon and about Philippe Clement. He said, um, if you look at the history of Philippe, he made us champions in his second year as head coach. He went to Bruges and made them champions three years in a row. So, you know, he's that, that, that is that is positive. You know, the fact that he's got that track record at Bruges is that sort of thing that we need to be looking for. Those Bruges days that he had the three titles in a row. That's what we need for him at Ibrox. Um, so he's the, one of the only coaches in the history of Belgian football who has won four consecutive championships with two different teams. I mean, what a fantastic achievement. He says, if I'm really honest, I can say I believe to an important extent we only played Champions League because Philippe was our head coach. I can say the same for Bruges. I don't think they would have played three times in the Champions League if it hadn't been for him. So his impact on teams that he coaches is really very important. I'm not surprised at all that he's been really successful in Glasgow already. Um, absolutely, Philippe is a football animal, and I think that was something he missed. A, uh, he missed a lot in Monaco. He says, I haven't been to Glasgow. Now, I think one of the reasons he's saying that he wasn't a success in Monaco was the fact that they didn't have the atmosphere, the passion that the Genk fans, the Bruges fans, and certainly us as Rangers fans bring to the ground and to the stadium and to, to match day. Something Philippe Clement has already talked about. And he said, Kroonan went on to say, I've been in Glasgow, yet I plan to do so because I really want to experience the whole atmosphere of an old firm game and look forward to doing that. I'll be sending him a text to tell him that. We, we communicate, not, for, not every week or every month, but we are still in contact because in my time as president, I really appreciate a lot that he's somebody I was able to work well with. Now, it's interesting to say, isn't it, you know, that an ex-chairman still has such positive things to say about Clement. And it really does show that, you know, the board and we are in the perfect place with this manager to really kick on and be successful. His work, his his passion, his, his, his desire, his love of football is something he's clearly transmitting to the players. And it's helped with that sea change in mentality that we're seeing. And that gives you a little bit more optimism, I think, going into these two games that perhaps in the past will be games where we would historically trip up and drop point you know i still be nervous of course i will on saturday and wednesday of course i will it's it it's it's the it's the past that affects you it always does and it always will do one of the little side a little aside before we finish the video this morning uh, this afternoon or this evening depends on when you picked it up is this psv eindhoven were playing in the champions league last night um against borussia dortmund um and they drew their game uh with dortmund um, Luke de Jong penalty in the 56 minutes maintaining uh, that game. Now, apparently that means that uh, they haven't lost at the Philips Stadion now for 18 months. Who was the last team to be successful and win in the Philips Stadion? Yes, that's right. It was Glasgow Rangers in that European tie the other year with under Gio van Bronckhurst. So apparently we are the last team 
to beat PSV Eindhoven at home. Uh, their very impressive 18-month unbeaten record uh, obviously uh, started after they lost to us. There we go. So the side guys, little note there for you, just a little bit of a uh, positive from the past there. Well, guys, let me know what you think of what we discussed in the video this morning, this afternoon, or this evening, depending on when you've picked up the video. Thank you for watching Glasgow Rangers Nation. As always, guys, if you can smash the sub, that'd be brilliant to help the channel to keep on growing. And obviously smash the like on the video as well. And the way out is the first thing I always ask of you. The second thing is, remember always, we are the people. <laughs>